Hey everyone, it's Jamie. I recently hit 100 subscribers and today I'll be sharing with you a couple of lessons and tips that I learned the hard way in getting 100 subscribers, helping you guys to get 100 subscribers easier and not to give up as easy. I feel like getting the first 100 subscribers is probably the hardest part to any YouTube channel and it's really easy to give up and hopefully I can help you guys out. I backtrack, getting 100 subscribers is actually pretty easy. So firstly, just go onto Google, make 100 Google accounts and then subscribe to yourself. There, you've got 100 subscribers. My first tip is actually to use your existing audience. When creating a YouTube channel, it seems like you're just starting from zero subscribers, but that's actually not the case. You actually already have a very large following and reach for your personal connection through friends and family and your social media followers. And one of the mistakes that I made was that I was pretty apprehensive about showing my channel to anyone that I knew in person. I thought they'd think of me as weird and cringe, which I am. Because of that, I only showed a couple of close friends and it took me six months to reach 25 subscribers because of that without much of an audience and I really felt like I was gonna give up. Actually by using your existing audience you can actually gain many subscribers very quickly and easily and build an audience which supports you and gives you great feedback. After sharing my YouTube channel I gained about 30 subscribers and a lot more after that too from my existing audience and I was actually very surprised of the positive response to it. I thought people would like make fun of me for my YouTube channel which I, ho I hope no one's doing behind my back. But the response is overwhelmingly positive and there actually wasn't anything to be scared of in the first place and it was all just in my head. People honestly don't really care about your channel anyway so you should just try to get your work out there and start promoting on your social media streams and in person. So another lesson slash tip that I learned is to try new things in your YouTube channel and to not niche yourself. At the start of my channel I kind of niched myself into the tech niche where I made tech reviews. I made five or six tech reviews and I didn't find those videos to do that well. And I was starting to get a little bit bored of just doing my tech reviews because I have a variety of different interests. So that's why I decided to pivot my channel. So now I just make videos on anything that I really want to. My channel is just a massive cesspool of whatever interests me at the current moment. And by not niching yourself, you can identify what works well and what doesn't work well so that you can learn from your mistakes and make content which is maybe more popular or resonates with some of your subscribers. And it allows you to get a far larger scope of an audience rather than just a couple of people within a specific niche. I found that I couldn't really add anything new or interesting to the tech niche just due to my lack of experience, my lack of knowledge and also my lower production quality compared to really great channels such as MKBHD, Olia and Knoopsy. As I'm not confined to a specific niche, I can make videos on anything which I want. I'm far more motivated to make my videos and I can also assess which topics do well and which topics don't do well. If there is a video or topic which is doing well on your channel, you should repeat it and double down on it. For example, my video What's in My Tech Bag did pretty well for me relative to my channel during June. And because I knew that that video was popular and there was already a demand for that sort of content, I knew that a similar video such as What's in My Everyday Carry Bag would also do well. And that was was definitely the case. I just do lots of trial and error with my channel and you don't have to have like consistency in terms of thumbnails or even consistency in terms of topics even at the start and you should just try everything and hopefully land on something that works. My next tip is to keep at it and that it pays off. There have been so many countless times where I haven't had any traction with my channel and I wasn't happy with my content. My video might get corrupted, there might be a mistake in my editing and I might be on the fifth take of filming a video and I just really want to give up and I actually gave up on my channel between March and May just due to the lack of traction that I got and I'm so grateful that I didn't I gave myself a second chance with this channel you just have to keep going and eventually you will be able to improve even if you aren't getting the traction in terms of views likes subscribers and etc you are still developing your skills and you are still growing as a creator and all of your hard work and dedication does eventually pay off and compound and you will definitely probably progress immensely in addition to views. Like look at my first video, I was just so unconfident and pretty awkward. I was reading off the script which I am still doing right now, which I'm a bit guilty of. And although this video was in 4K, it was a complete dumpster fire. However, after making about 20-ish videos, I've become a lot more confident in front of the camera. Hopefully I can show my personality a lot more on the camera and I've learned lots of great skills like Photoshop, scripting, video editing, shooting A-roll and shooting B-roll, 
communication and promotion skills which extend far beyond YouTube and will definitely benefit you throughout your life. My next tip is that perfect is the enemy. I heard this great story from Austin Cleon on a podcast, the author of Show Your Work and Steal Like an Artist, and it really challenged the way I thought about perfectionism. So there was this ceramics teacher who divided their class into two separate groups. So there was one group based on quality which could produce only one pot, whereas there was one group based on quantity which could produce as many pots as possible. Curiously, the higher quality work was actually being produced by the group being graded for quantity. While the quantity group was busy making their work and focusing on improving, learning, experimenting and trying new things, the quantity group focused on perfectionism and they didn't have much to show for their efforts. And this is pretty similar for my own YouTube channel. As a new content creator, it is pretty difficult to have high expectations and a big vision and it's often very paralyzing to start a new project and it's very intimidating. And I found that to be the case with myself, especially during the start of my channel. I was a bit of a perfectionist over my videos and there were some videos which I just decided to scrap. And I often am not like the most happy with my videos and there are so many things I wish I could have improved on. Maybe my editing, maybe the way I spoke to the camera, maybe the camera wasn't a slight angle. But honestly, if I focus on making a perfect video, I would have no videos out there because none of my videos are perfect. And that would stop me from growing and being closer to making better quality content. Instead, I feel like we should focus on getting our videos out there and learning through making mistakes. And through focusing on quantity, you have more opportunities to reach different audiences and you have more opportunities to further perfect your craft and start learning and developing your skills. My next tip is to make a process. Making a YouTube video can seem like it's a heavy lift every single time and it can be hard to make videos day in and day out. There are just so many components to a video which is normally overlooked by the viewer. You have a script for video, you have to learn the script, set up, you've got to edit, you've got to edit b-roll, you've got to shoot b-roll and you've got to get music, you've got to do motion graphics, color grading, thumbnails, promotion, titles, and tagging. And there's so many just aspects to a process. However, I found that by making a process, it allows me to make my videos more faster and efficiently as I can batch many tasks together. I just recently filmed my iPhone 13 video this morning and now I'm shooting this video, so I don't have to spend too much time switching between tasks and I can focus on the task at hand. Thank you for watching everyone. If you like this video, you know what to do. Please comment, like, and subscribe because I put a lot of effort into these videos. Please tell me down below any videos you'd like to see in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.